Colin. Uh, my name's Colin Stewart. I'm from Canmore High School. I'd just like to um, endorse what Michael said before about what's happening in his school, and it's certainly happening in my school as well. There's a lot of pressure, and I think probably anybody who teaches in a large high school here is seeing the same thing. And added to that, the previous question about NAPLAN, and you've got principals wanting percentage improvements in NAPLAN, you've got percentage improvements in OPs being required, and also in our school now we're looking at the possibility of moving to A-list and B-list subjects, where kids in sort of academic streams will be um, selected into certain subjects. There's one thing, uh, John, I, I take on board what you were saying about what teachers can do and the advocacy and so on, and there's one thing that this group of people and the committee and the writers could do which would really, really help us. So there's one request I'd like to make, and that is if you look on page 10 of the, um, of the document and you were to look at uh, paragraph 30, and this really fits in with what was in your PowerPoint as well, John, where you were saying that all students should be able to engage with the arts if possible. It would really help us if it was to say in the last sentence there, in years 9 to 12, all students will have the opportunity to study in one or more art forms as a specialisation. And that tiny word would make a huge difference because at our school, due to timetable structures, line structures and so on, just looking at it yesterday, the line structure at our school prevents students from uh, studying Japanese and German and taking either visual art or a media subject. So if it was to specifically say all students will at least have that opportunity, that tiny change could be quite profound. So, thank you. I hope so. Can I just say quickly that I, I really hope that's the case. We've been wrestling with Akara on this kind of wording, on this very issue, for about six months now, because Akara, I think, is... Oh, the Akara Curriculum Committee is nervous of making any... Uh, requirements for schools that principals have to do. I would love to be able to put the word all back in. It was there. And there's also another point where you may discover the word may, which is some in one, I can't remember which paragraph, children may study. We had that as must. And I'm still fighting to get must, or at least should. <laughs> <laughs> Restored, because those are the key words, as you say. Thanks for that. Um, we encourage everyone here today to make sure that you contribute to your state association's response, but your individual responses are equally significant. And ACARA has an external company who evaluates the feedback. So if there's a trend, for example, a particular word or a particular focus should be present in the document, that trend's noted by the number of responses. So it's, it's counted, Colin, literally. So it's really important that if you're hearing this today and you've thought, oh, I would ne not necessarily have considered that in my own feedback and response, <coughs> remember you have the opportunity as individuals to provide that feedback. Okay, sorry. Um, my name is Melissa Newton-Turner and I'm a lecturer and tutor at QUT Common Grove Creative Industries. Am I back? Yes. Um, I'm in drama curriculum studies. My question uh, came from Margaret, your comments about how, very much about curriculum and who owns the curriculum and who writes the curriculum. And I'm a little bit um, confused, I suppose. At the moment, with grade 11 and 12 particularly in Queensland, and I'm only speaking from a drama perspective, um, with our strong syllabus, we then make that, I suppose, uh, personal to our own school, but we are still held accountable through the moderation and verification process to the QSA of what we are teaching. And that keeps us, I suppose, as a state true and keeps us very strong. And what I'm a little bit confused about is with you talking about curriculum and who owns it and who writes it and, and who's it for, can you align for me, now that we're having a national curriculum, who is the body that we are accountable to, particularly in 11 and 12, but I would hope in 9 and 10 as well, because at the moment there is no body that we're accountable in 9 and 10 drama, and I think that is a flaw, but I think that's what keeps us strong in 11 and 12. And who is the body and how will that work? I don't see any of those things changing. Um, I would imagine you'll continue to be accountable to the Queensland Studies Authority, etc. What I'm, um, my remarks were guided at thinking flexibly about what you see on paper and thinking flexibly, flexibly about what occurs in a classroom. Um, 
which perhaps provides me with an opportunity to, to refer to some of the criticisms that have been uh, driven at the first phase of the curriculum and uh, in particular the current criticisms about that first phase being terribly um, content heavy and over specific and over detailed. Um, and we need to ensure that in the curriculum that we develop for the arts that it be doesn't become so prescriptive that there is not room for individual teachers and individual children to make decisions and create a meaningful curriculum that works in the classroom for them. That doesn't mean that we've thrown everything out the window and we make it up on the spot and on, on that day and it changes from day to day, but rather that within the broad frameworks that are given to us, we can look at the children with whom we are working, the young people with whom we are working, the experiences that they bring, our skills and expertise, and create a meaningful curriculum together with those young people that still accords to those guidelines. If I could just offer a Queensland Studies perspective response as well to that question. Um, the senior certification in every state and territory will remain the same. So, so the curriculum will be taken into the syllabuses as we know it. And there's currently dialogue with the three schooling sectors and the QSA about the nature of syllabus um, P to 10. So that conversation is actually happening now. What's the difference between curriculum content like the essential learnings and assessable elements and standards and the Australian curriculum and achievement standards and a syllabus? And they are two different beasts. And so the states are responsible for, if a syllabus is the legislative requirement as it is in Queensland, taking the Australian curriculum and standard and making that a syllabus is, un is under consultation and discussion now with the three schooling sectors. What does that actually mean? And therefore, what kind of advice would go inside a one to 10 syllabus? for the arts, that is the Australian curriculum content. Just another thing, the definition of content for ACARA is knowledge, skills and processes. And so when you hear in the press the use of the content heavy term, it's really important to really review that a little bit deeply and say, is that because there isn't adequate skills and processes or is that because there's a lot of facts and facts and, and, and chunks of information. And I think that's sometimes misused in the press in terms of uh, too heavy content. And those of you who've been had a chance to look at the drafts, you'll have seen that they've actually come down and they're quite low definition, which is the Queensland term, quite slim line now. So there's a lot of expectation that teachers will carry a lot of knowledge with them to enact the current curriculum. So just take that in, into your um, knowledge.